I stand here before you with a shameful confession to make. I actually really didn't want to tell you about this, but it's crucial for the story I am going to tell you today. So here's the thing, I said yes to giving this TED talk because I knew it would gain me a higher social status. It's true. In my defense, everyone knows what a TED talk is. There's this belief that once you've done a TED talk, then you've made it as a public speaker. It's something to be proud of, and it gives the impression that you have something interesting to share with the world. And in fact, I had it all figured out. I would be here tonight with one purpose, and one purpose only, to impress the shit out of my audience. My performance, of course, would be flawless, and you would laugh at all my jokes. At the end of the night, you would all agree that I was the best speaker of the evening. In fact, this is the best TED Talk you've ever seen. Since this is recorded, my TED Talk would go viral, and I would get millions of views. I would be listed as one of the most inspirational speakers of all time. I would be rich, admired, famous, and somehow very beautiful. It didn't take long, of course, before reality caught up with me. And this moment especially happened when I told a friend of mine I was going to do this tonight, and his response was, whoa, a TED Talk? I'm like, oh my god, I know. And then he said, but wait, aren't those supposed to be like really inspiring? <laughs> okay, ouch. So I'm not inspiring is what you're saying, and he didn't even deny that. So that was kind of awkward. Also, I realized I had not seen a single TED Talk in my life. And it seemed like a wise decision to, you know, start watching a few, to see what it was all about, and to watch uh, speakers with similar subjects as mine, and to give myself some more motivation and some self-confidence, which I was clearly lacking at this point. So I started Googling things like how to be the most inspirational speaker, how to give a TED Talk in 10 easy steps. And, you know, that didn't really work. You have speakers like Will Steven, who literally has a 10-minute presentation about nothing, and he still makes it interesting. Then you have David Blaine, who talks about how he held his breath for 17 minutes, which is interesting as fuck. Then you have Sheryl Sandberg on why we have too few women leaders. I mean, I'm a feminist, sort of. Why didn't I come up with that? And then there's me. And this is like a slap in the face, right? Not just for you, because you got to do with me tonight, but also for me to realize that I am not nearly anywhere as near as exceptional as I thought I was. I mean, I have enough self-knowledge to admit that I'm not anywhere near the level of the people I've just mentioned. I'm just average. I'm an average public speaker. And average, that is just not something you want to be. It's basically the worst place you can find yourself in. You're not good enough to be praised, and you're not bad enough to be able to have a sense of humor about it. Let's get this away now. So, at today's standards, average is equal to failure. We are constantly encouraged to strive for nothing less than perfection. We're always asked, what is your talent? What are you good at? What are your goals and dreams, and how are you going to reach them? How are you going to be different than anyone else? So every day, our lives are flooded with extraordinary things. We only see the prettiest of pictures, we tell the funniest stories, and we share only our successes. I don't think I'm exactly shaking up everything we know about psychology when I say that striving for perfection usually leads to less self-esteem and horrible mental health. So today, I want to motivate you all, and myself, to say fuck it to this expectation that you have to achieve great things in life. I want to show you why we should all accept and embrace the fact that we will never own a million-dollar company, we will never invent anything life-changing, and we will never have a million followers on Instagram. It's just not going to happen. So the first step to embracing your averageness I think is to understand what being average actually means. Because unlike what most people think, being average is not equal to failure at all. Let's take a look at some graphics for a moment. By the way, this is not scientific at all. I made this in paint. 
just to get the picture. So this is Hannah. She's pretty good at public speaking, right? This is Dylan. He's pretty all right as well. This is Sam. Pretty decent. This is Thomas. He's not that great at public speaking. And these are some other people. So what we see here are the people who are extremely talented, and we're probably all jealous of them. These are the people you see in funniest home videos. But what we see here is that the vast majority of us is, in fact, average. Not good, not bad. You know, just somewhere in the middle. And the truth is that most people will never be truly exceptional at, well, anything. Problems arise when we pretend that this isn't true. It's an accepted part in our society to believe that every single one of us is destined to become a great person. Or worse, that we feel entitled to success and will eventually get it anyway if we just work hard enough. And you know, accepting that you're average, that is just not an easy thing to do. You start asking questions like, but if I'm not trying to be the best I can, then what is the point of living? And all right, fair enough. I'm not saying that you should just give up on your dreams, nor am I saying that we should all just say, fuck it, and Netflix 24-7. What I am saying is that it's a good thing to try and be the best possible version of yourself that you can, but rather to accept the reality of what we end up with, despite trying our best. And let's be honest, most of us here in this room will live an average life and will not make a huge change to, to the world. And you know what? That's completely fine. You can be really happy being average. In fact, I'd argue that average people are often happier than very successful ones, whom are constantly working and often lack other things like a healthy social life or, you know, sleep. At the beginning of my TED talk, I told you that I was confronted by the simple fact that I am an average public speaker. I'm not awful at it, right? I love how no one responds to that. <laughs> I get it. But you know, I'll certainly never be on top of the game. I accept that I will never be one of the most inspirational speakers of all time. I mean, some people will like the way I speak, and some people will think the way I'm building my story is poorly done or that my English pronunciation is annoying. And that's cool. I'm dying on the inside, but it's cool. Don't be scared of being average. Embrace it. It's something you can do right now, right here. This is the first TED Talk you'll be able to master instantly. You should also realize that the only person who cares is you. Does the world care about you becoming a CEO? No, they don't. The only person who cares is you. You should be happy with what you do, and you should do it the way you want it. Being average is completely fine. Thank you.